Today is the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There's only one collection this morning. Our gathering song is number 611, For the Beauty of the Earth, 611. Draw near to 
your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as the creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Kohol Koheleth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to man from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun. All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Think of what is above, 
not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, then, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. I suppose we've all had the experience at some time of setting out on a journey, knowing what our destination is. But as we go along, we get distracted by something, preoccupied with it, and find we're forgetting about the goal of our journey. So the Lord reminds us this week in the scriptures we are all on a journey of faith and hope. We journey through this world, using the things of this world, 
but we know a goal in life is that moment when Christ Jesus comes to us in glory. That's what we live for. And we heard in the Old Testament reading the wise man of Israel saying, Vanity of vanities, it's all vanity. A chase after hot air. Nothing that really matters. And when you think about some of the things we get so excited about in life, we become so preoccupied with it, and yet it really isn't that important in the end. We leave it all behind. As Jesus said, one's life does not consist of possessions. We are asked by the Lord to remember the goal of our life of faith, to live for Him. Yes, we have to make other decisions and be preoccupied with other things at times in life, whether at work or in the family or in relationships or whatever it may be. But we cannot allow it to dominate our lives to so distract us that we are absorbed with it, that we become slaves of it. Now, we know where we're going. St. Paul reminds us in today's second reading that in baptism we died with Christ symbolically and we were born again, born into a new life with Christ. And we yearn for that moment when our journey of faith is complete in Christ, when we receive the fullness of his resurrection and new life, joy and peace that the world cannot give us. We renew our commitment of faith as we pray the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Light from light, true God from true God, begot not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son and the Lord glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to the baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. The Lord God teaches us to seek what is truly important in life. We present our petitions as we pray for our church, 
a world, a nation, and our personal needs. Today we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That all may not be fools preoccupied with the passing things of this world, and for our fellow citizens and leaders, that they come to recognize the truth that every human person, especially the unborn child, is sacred and must be protected in law, we pray. For the suffering people of Ukraine and those Christians who suffer religious persecution and death in Nigeria, we pray. For all married couples, that they grow in wisdom and their love for one another, we pray. That many accept the Lord's call to serve his people as priests and religious, we pray. For Patty Grimes, Judy Wilbank, Ruth Bauer, Julia Davis, Mary Tabler, Susan Watkins, and all who are sick in mind, spirit, or body, that the Lord heal them and give them strength and peace. We pray. For Dawn Marie Smith, Nancy Colombo, for whom this Mass is being offered, and all who have died in Christ, that they rejoice in eternal life and peace. We pray. We pause in silence to remember our personal needs. With trust we pray, Lord, Lord God, you teach us not to be fools, preoccupied with the vanities of this world. Help us to be truly wise, to seek eternal life and joy. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Please sing number 621, Make Your Home in Me, 621.
pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty and Merciful Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels of thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Celebrate 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Nancy Columbo, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, especially the suffering people of Ukraine and the people suffering from the extreme flooding in Kentucky and the wildfires in the West. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Helena, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, to the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
behold him that takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
601. 